am a little out there as a pastor. I am not taboo. I don't like to do what everybody else is doing. So, you know, churches right now, they're probably talking about how love and the love of God, and that's great. But I wanted to hit something that would just sting people. So I talked to my media team and my, my staff, and I said, hey, I, I want to talk about porn. Can we, can we come up with something that's like, and then we came up with love over porn. That's it. That's what I want to talk about. It's the month of love, but let's throw porn in there because that's an issue. So much so, when, when, when we, our, our media team, they did such a great job with the graphic. Um, thank you, media team. You did a great job. Um, that I got, a, I, got a, I got a message on my Instagram from a pastor friend of mine, and he's a great pastor out in San Diego, Cornerstone, uh, Pastor Sergio De La Mora, and he said, you need to reach out to this couple. And I, re I, I reached out to the couple. We were in New York, and they called me, and they are actually part of Triple X Church, Triple X Church, okay? And they'll be here on the third week. And I'm going to tell you right now, this is something because he said this. He says, a lot of churches try to stay away from this topic. They don't want to talk about these things. And I said, no, 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 no. We at Community Worship Center, we got to tackle those issues that are going on right now in our community. Because if God is going to bring a double portion, you, you got to deal with some issues that you've been hiding. So, some stuff you've been putting and, and pushing away. So, so we're going to talk about this in the next four weeks. So I'm going to, I, I, I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to ask you. Be with us these four weeks. Try to come as every Sunday because we're going we're gonna to hit something every Sunday that's going to help your life. It's going to help you in your walk. Amen? Amen? All right. Let me read you some stats. These stats alarmed me when I read them. The first one, over 40 million Americans are regular visitors to porn sites. The average visit lasts 6 minutes and 29 seconds. Over 40 million Americans are regular visitors to porn sites. Let me, let me put this into context. There are 22 million people in the city of Los Angeles. So almost double visit porn sites. Number two, there are around 42 million porn websites, which totals around 370 million pages of porn. The porn industry's annual revenue is more than the NFL, NBA, and MLB combined. It is also more than the combined revenues of ABC, CBS, and NBC. That's how much money the pornography industry is making. More than all those combined. Come on, we all got jerseys and they ain't cheap, right? You go to a game now and it's a hundred and something dollars. You park it's a hundred. It's, it's expensive. But even those three MLB, NBA, and NFL combined doesn't doesn't come close to how much the porn industry makes. 47% of families in the United States reported that pornography is a problem in their home. 47%, almost half of the families. Well, not my home, it's Christian. Uh, I'm going to read you some Christian sets right now. Pornography, pornography use increases the marital infidelity rate by more than 300%. 11 is the average age that a child is first exposed to porn. And 94% of children will see porn by the age of 14. 11. Not my child, 94%. That's 9.4 out of 10 will see porn by the age of 14. We've all been exposed. The problem is, is nobody's talking about it, especially the church. But we're breaking that curse today in Jesus' name. We're going to help some families get free. We're going to help some people get free. Because this has bound a lot of people. As a matter of fact, someone came up to me after the service and said, Pastor, me. And I said, I know. But that's okay. We're going to walk with you. See, too many times people are saying, well, not me. I'm good. I'm good. No, I just watch it. I'm going to give you some more stats. You ready? 56% of American divorces involve one party having an obsessive interest in pornographic websites. 56% of American divorces. 70% of Christian youth pastors report that they have had at least one teen come to them for help in dealing with pornography in the past 12 months. Now watch this, because I'm going to get into some Christian stats now. 
68% of church-going men, let me say that again, 68% of church-going men and over 50% of pastors view porn on a regular basis. One out of two pastors view porn. 68% of church-going men. I'm going to go to church to find me a good man. Watch out. Don't say that anymore because there's some wolves up in here. You better. They got to have what? Good credit. Right, Bree? They got to love the Lord. They got to love the Lord first and then have good credit because you. And, and the third thing nowadays, you better check their phone. You better check their computer. If you come and they're, cl they're closing their computer real quick, that's a red flag. If you're like, oh, I'm who are you texting? Oh, oh, watch out. That's, that's the reality of now. Every, does, raise your hand if you have a smartphone. If you have a smartphone. If you have an iPhone. I don't know if the Android, whatever that is. But <laughs> By the way, this is an iPhone church too. Uh, I'd be trying to send pictures on to people. They don't ever get them because they have Androids. I guess they don't. They can't interpret my. It's like my. My, my phone is speaking tongues to the other. It's, can, I, can I share some? If you have a smartphone, it's actually a dumb phone. Because everything is right there at our fingertips. I remember when I was growing up, you had to go to, to view porn. You had to go to the liquor store. And they had this curtain. And they had, they had this sign that said um, 18 and over. And I always try to be like, what's back there? Like, I... I'm a kid, I didn't know, and I was curious. And then when you go back there, you're like, whoa, okay. Like, I was exposed at a very young age too. I went through this. I know what I'm talking about. The problem is, is nobody came and told me, son, it's wrong. Hey, you, you, this, is not, this is not reality. Because what happens is, is, we look at a magazine, and when I was a kid, it looked at a magazine, oh, that's how my, my lady's got to be. And so the reality is, is that you look at something that's not a reality, it's false. And then when you get with someone, it's not what you thought was reality. And all of a sudden, you're leaving that person to go with somebody else because I, I, I was looking for that. And then we get divorced. And then we try another relationship. And it don't work out. And we get divorced and we go to another relationship. And that's what happens. The problem is not the person, it's us. Until you deal with you. It'll never get better. 68% of church-going men and over 50% of pastors view porn on a regular basis. Of young Christian adults, 18 to 24 years old, 76% actively search for porn. It don't matter. If it, listen, this is Christian. Of young Christian adults, 18 to 24 years old, 76% actively search for porn. There is a problem. Because I'm preaching about Jesus and then you're getting something and you're going home and you open up a website. There is something that's missing. We need to fix it. 59% of pastors said that married men seek their help for porn use. 59% of pastors said that married men seek their help for porn use. You ready, ladies? 33% of women aged 25 and under search for porn at least once a month. 33%. Only 13% of self-identified Christian women say they never watch porn. Only 13%. Now, here's the alarming stat. 87% of Christian women have watched porn. 55% of married men and 25% of married women say they watch porn at least once a month. 57% of pastors say porn addiction is the most damaging issue in their congregation. And 69% say porn has adversely impacted the church. Let me read that stat again. 57% of pastors, more than half of pastors say that porn addiction is the most damaging issue in their church, in their congregation. And 69% say porn has adversely impacted the church. 
I knew, I knew of someone that was addicted to pornography. And they were a worship leader. And we'd get them a job. And the job would last a year. Because the pastor would come and see they were looking at porn on the computer in the church. And we dealt with the person, tried to get the person healing. Next job, same deal. Ask me today where that person is, I couldn't tell you. Because they never dealt with it. See, too many times we think it's not an issue when it really is. We think, oh, I just, it's just once in a while. No, once in a while is all the devil needs. That's all he needs is just an inch. And the devil will take a mile. So if 57% of pastors say porn addiction is the most damaging issue in their congregation, and 69% say porn has adversely impacted the church, watch this, only 7% of pastors say their church has a program to help people struggling with pornography. 59% say it's impacted their church. 69% say that, that uh, it has adversely impacted the church, but there's only 7% that are doing something about it. Well, guess what? CWC is about to do something about it. We're going to help some people become free from the addiction of pornography. As we begin, if you need a handout, you should have gotten one. If you're not, just raise your hand. Our ushers will glad to get you one. But everyone should have a handout. I wanna, for the next four weeks, I'm going to give you a handout. And on the back of that handout, this is why I believe as a church, we can't just inform you and not give you resources to help you out. On the back of that handout, there are some resources to help you. Some websites you can go to. And you know what? I know some of those costs, but let me tell you something. We don't have a problem to go spend $100 at in and out for a family of five. But I can't spend $25 or $50 to get my family healed and whole. But I want people healed. Are you with me? Let's read some scriptures. James chapter 5 verse 16 says this. Confess your sins to who? each other watch this I want you to underline that underline each other why because here's the problem we need accountability we don't have accountability and so it's easy to get caught up if you have no one holding you accountable here's how we do it at CWC uh, women hold women accountable and men hold men accountable I ain't trying to get anybody in trouble here so so if you're a young lady seek out another young lady to hold you accountable if you're a young man, you get another young man to hold you accountable. Even when we pray, I'm very a stickler with that as the pastor. I want men praying for men and I want women praying for women. And if I'm praying for a woman, you best believe my wife is going to be there with me. Or I'm going to have another one of my leaders or my elders with me that's a woman. Because I know how the devil works. I've been there when I've had pastor's friend and they put their hand on the shoulder praying for somebody. Oh, pastor touched me. It felt so good. Come on, I've been around the block. I know. I've seen it. And so we got to hold each other, what? Accountable. So confess your sins to each other and pray for who? So it's not just confessing, it's also praying. So, so confess and pray for each other so that you, say with me, you, may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful Results. First John 1 and 9 says this. But if we confess our sins to him, who's him? God. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Here, here, here's, I'm going to tell you real quick. We are all sinners from the pastor on down. Do not think that we come here just to sing a few songs and, and feel good. No, I come here because I need Jesus. I come here because I need a word that's going to help me go forward. I come here because I need the power of God in my life. So he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. Let me say this. It's not just forgiving. There's also cleansing that needs to take place. I don't know about you, but when I go to a restaurant and I see a dirty dish or a dirty cup, I'm not drinking out of that cup. Matter of fact, I might get an attitude and say, hey, uh, you need to get me another cup. Come on, you've been somewhere and there's something floating in your cup? Uh, pour it out. No, 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 no. Give me a new cup. Put that water hot. Scrub it and bring it back to me. Because I don't want to drink out of anything dirty. So why is it that I want God to use me dirty 
and think it's all good. Here's the problem. We come to church and we think, oh, I sang a couple of songs. I'm ready to go. And God says, wait a minute. There's still some dirt inside that I haven't. We are vessels. The Bible says we're vessels. And so if I'm dirty and I'm expecting God to use me, all that's going to come out with the oil is dirt. So God has to cleanse me. Say with me, cleanse. So cleanse us from all. Say with me, all. Wickedness. See, see here's, here's the thing. Um, he needs to forgive us our sins. We, what's this wickedness? Here, let me help you. I, I did this in the first service. Let's see, let's see how good they are back there. Uh, Galatians, Galatians. It's not in your notes, but I, the Lord kind of switched me a little. Oh, look at you guys are good back there. Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 to 21. They were paying attention. Watch this. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, when you follow, when you go after the desires, we all have desires. We all have desires. Yeah, don't be trying to front. We all have desires, and they're not all good. Okay. No, pastor, not me. I, when, I pre, when I pray, I say thou and thus. No. You got evil desires just like me. This is why the apostle Paul said, I must die to my flesh when? Daily. The apostle Paul, who wrote two-thirds of the New Testament, I think he was a little ho more holy than me. He had even, he said, he said, I do the things I don't want to do and, I, and, and the things I want to do, I don't do. He said that, not me. So if he said that, guess what? We're going to go through that. Sinful nature. Can I say this? When you were born, you were born into sin. You and I were born, we weren't perfect. We, we were going to, we that's why we needed a savior. So sinful nature. The results are very clear. The results are what? So when you follow, watch this. What's the first one? Sexual immorality. Impurity. Lustful pleasures. We're, we're talking about what that, what is that wickedness? That's this right here. Let, let's, let's continue. Verse 20. Idolatry. Sorcery. Hostility. Quarreling. Jealousy. Outbursts of anger. You know what? When I was reading this first service, the Lord, he reminded me. He says, when you catch, when, when, when a spouse catches another spouse watching porn or something happens, this is, what, this is the result outbursts of anger they start fighting they're jealous can i help a, 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 another person that if you're watching porn and your spouse is not good enough for you that's selfishness that's selfish ambition it's about you it's about your feelings and your wants instead of communicating and saying hey listen i'm having this issue the leading cause of divorce is not money it's a lack of communication it's not telling the other person how you feel Ladies, you're great at this. You'll make a face because you're expecting us to know what you're thinking. And this is what you say. Well, you should know already. And you do this number. I've been married 26 years and I still don't know. Now I have some hints. Because, ladies, you do know how to make hints. You know how to give us hints. But watch this. It's not about, it's, it's selfishness. That's, that's, that's that sinful nature. Dissension. Here it is. Division. This is what the devil is trying to cause in your home. Because if he causes it in the home, he's going to cause it in the church. Division. Everything that God, God's a God of order. The devil's a, he, he's a God of division. Oh, let's keep reading. Galatians 5 and 21 says this. Envy, drunkenness, and wild parties. They had wild parties back in the day too. And other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. It's clear. This is what wickedness is. See, Proverbs 28 and 13 says it like this. People who conceal their sins will not prosper. But if they confess and turn from them, they will receive mercy. So I'm going to give you some things here to help us out. And what I'm giving you is coming right from the Bible. Number one, you are not alone on this journey. You're not alone. I can sit here as I've been, as I preached at the first service and I'm standing here now. I'm realizing that people feel like I'm the only one when you're not. The stats say so. 
that 68% of church going men and over 50% of pastors view porn on a regular basis. You know, the, God's been dealing with me this, uh, about this lately with pastors that have been falling. And, and I believe God is a God of warning and he warns us. And, and if we're not paying attention, we'll fall into the trap also. And I've been, I've been praying and I'm saying, God, why, why, why is all this going on? Because the devil knows if he attacks the pastorate, the church, everybody's going to scatter. And here's the issue is that it's already going on in the church. And so he's like, I already got the church, so let me get to the head. Let me get to the pastor. Th that's why it's so important that, that we talk about these things and we, we, we get to the issue of the problem. But number one, you're not alone on this journey. We're going to walk. And I'm so grateful and glad that person came up to me after the first service and told me that. Because that tells me that, Lord, you at least reach one person. That this, God, you said if one person repents, there's a party going on in heaven. Well, one person came to me and, and, and said, I want accountability, Pastor. And even if you don't come to me, go to someone here and say, I just want, I want somebody, I want you to hold me accountable. You don't have to come to me. I'm okay. But I want you to get accountability in your life because the Bible says there that, that confess your sins to each other. You, you got to. This ain't, look, I am not Catholic. I'm not condoning you going to a priest. No, you need to go to a peer and, and so you could talk to somebody. Because in Catholic, I, I think the churches, they'd be like, you behind that thing and you're like, Can you see me? I want to say 10 Hail Marys and go home. I, I don't know what they say, but no, no, this is face to face. This is face to face. Confess and then pray. Because we don't have all the answers. Listen, here, here's what it is. Is you don't need to go confess to someone and they were like, well, let me, let me give you 10 steps on how to get free. No, no. Confess and pray. You're there to be an ear so I can, so I can speak to someone and, 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 and get this off my chest. And then, and then pray and encourage me. But you're not alone. Say with me, I'm not alone. Listen, you have your peers next to you, but you also have God who's there for you. The Bible says he will never leave us nor forsake us. Watch this. So here, here, here's number two. Prayer, confession, and turning from your sins are key to your healing. Forgiveness, prosperity, and mercy. As we read those scriptures, those are the answers. It's prayer, it's confession, and it's turning from your sins. From that wickedness that we've been talking about. That sexual immorality. It's interesting that it starts, the Apostle Paul starts with sexual immorality. Because it leads to other things. Now, now we're, we're going to get into this because this is a long, going to be a long four weeks because we're really going to dive into this. And as we pray and as we confess and as we turn, that's key to the healing that God wants to give me. That's key to my forgiveness. And some of you haven't forgiven yourself and so you keep going back. People who conceal their sins will not prosper. But if they confess and turn from them, they will receive mercy. Here's three things I want to give you also. Number one, confession is the prerequisite to healing. It's the prerequisite to healing. We were on the plane coming back from New York. We were in New York for the past three days visiting with our team over there. We had an awesome time with our team. And uh, we met some new people that are going to the community groups. And uh, I... I was coming back and the Lord just began to deal with me on this series that we're doing. And he said, people want to be healed without confessing. And they want to hide the confession because they're ashamed of what they're confessing. And God is saying, it's, it's before healing comes confession. You got to confess that. You got you to gotta own up to it. You want to be healed? I got to confess. The second thing is, is is prayer is the foundation to healing. The first value of CWC is we pray. We pray. When anything is anything's going wrong, we pray. When everything is great, we pray. When there's a situation that arises, we pray. When we need to make a decision, we pray. We pray. It's our foundation. And if it's our foundation, God can grow his church. So much so that Jesus 
when he was in the temple and he saw them, the money changers, and they were exchanging money and they were doing all these things, Jesus got angry. He got so angry, he started flipping over the tables. He made a whip and started whipping people. Wow. And he said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. But you've made it a den of thieves. And you know what a lot of churches are? It's a den of pornography. It's a den of making you feel good. It's a den of entertainment. And I'm here to tell you, I'm not here to entertain you. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get right up in your business and say, if you have an issue, Jesus wants to bring healing to your life. If your marriage is messed up, he wants your marriage whole. So cut that mess out and stop being angry and jealous. She's coming to you. She's coming home to you anyways. Well, I don't want her looking at other men. Stop looking at other women. Prayer is the foundation to healing. Listen, if you don't pray, don't expect to be healed. Because you're getting your information from other sources that are not God. And other sources, let me help some of you here. I feel this so strongly. Stop getting uh, counseling from people that are not married. Why, uh, let, let me speak to the women for a second. Stop getting advice from a woman that is not married, that has not been with her husband, that's not a, doesn't have a husband, and telling you, well, you should tell him this and that. You don't know what it is to be married. Shut your mouth. Men, stop listening to the single dude that wants to be going clubbing and tell you, come on, let's go. Nah, tell her you got time. What? We're listening to fools instead of praying and listening to our Father. I talked about this two weeks ago. You got to turn the frequency up so you can hear heaven clearly. Because God wants to speak to you. But are you listening? I'm not listening to outside voices that are confusing me. Because the last time I heard, God is not the author of confusion. So then that means that the, de the devil is. And he wants to confuse you. And he wants to, he wants to get you away from each other. Because if you are together... Better read Ecclesiastes. Prayer is the foundation to healing. Watch this, I'm almost done. The third thing is turning is the beginning of mercy. Turning, turning, turning. When you, when you turn, you repent. Let me say this too. Some of you, stop, stop this. God, Lord, why do you keep giving me this? Okay. Um, stop being, bringing people in your life that have not repented for the things they've done to you because you keep bringing them back in and they keep hurting you and instead of letting them go letting, letting God deal with you and letting God deal with them you keep bringing them back in because you're saying well I have to forgive so let me bring them back in and they haven't turned and they haven't repented so they keep messing with you let God deal with them let God deal with them let God deal with your heart I'm speaking to someone in here today because you keep bringing people in and you keep getting hurt and they keep making that hurt even more and more and more and God is saying stop oh I feel that strong in my spirit right now turning is the beginning of mercy listen when they turn then you have mercy okay I'm going to bring you back in but if they don't repent all they're going to do is they haven't learned their lesson misery loves company and they want to bring you right down with them because they don't like to see you happy. I'm not, this ain't even in my notes, but somebody needs to hear this today. Stop it, stop it, because the enemy is a liar. And he wants to make you feel bad. But as, as long as you're searching for God and you're loving on God and he's loving on you, he's gonna heal your heart. And then let him deal with them over there. And when he's ready, he'll bring them. And there'll be reconciliation. But for now, let God heal you. Turning is the beginning of mercy. Turning is doing a 180. It's not doing a 360 because then you're going to end up at the same point you ended up. When people go, I'm, I'm doing a 360. Well, you're going to end up where you ended up? It's a 180. It's turning around and, and, and going the opposite direction. Then I'll receive mercy from God. Final thing is, porn is the fruit, not the root. The Lord really dealt heavy with me on this about root and fruit. You guys know about my Lamorange tree, right? 
my great grandmother planted this little orange tree in our house and she grafted a lemon and an orange tree but before she grafted it it had to grow she had to sow a seed and here's what happens it grew and then she grafted them and then they, and now we have these wonderful tasting lemon oranges they're lemons but they have a little hint of orange in them and I make my iced tea and it's like the best on the planet and I ain't from the south I'm Puerto Rican so they don't even but anyways I digress but I would have never gotten the taste of that fruit if she didn't first sow that seed that grew into a plant. See, the seed took time to grow. See, pornography is not the root, it's fruit. So, so let me say it like this. As the fruit grows, you get mad at the fruit. The fruit's bad. Why is the fruit bad? because we never took care of the root. Hey, let me say it like this. I have a rose bush and the rose bush, my mom's house, she loved roses. I hate roses. I hate, hate with a passion. Don't ever get me roses. If you get me anything, please not a rose. And there were some rose bushes in front of my room and I cut roses. Some of you might love roses, sorry, but I don't like them because they grow and there's thorns and it's just messy it's messy but if you've ever realized a thorn bush the roots are massive I didn't know this so I was trying to take the, the root out and I, I got it I was like good it took me like two days I was digging and digging and digging and digging and I got it out. I was like yes look babe I got it do it away covered it up we actually put some desert plants because I love desert plants because you don't have to water them you spit on them and then they, they just grow And so, about three weeks later, I'm at my plants and I see this little thing growing. And I'm like, you lying devil. I knew what it was. It was the rose bush. It was growing back. And I thought I dealt with the root. I thought I dealt with it. I did, but, but, but I missed a root. And then it started bearing fruit. And it started coming back. And so I went in there, I dug again, and I started digging. I said, devil lying root, I'm getting you out. And I got it out. And in the backyard, I did the same thing. And I went back there last week, and there's a big old rose bush growing. Because I never dealt with the root. See, here's what the problem is. Pornography is not the root. You know what the root is? Some of you were abused when you were young. You know what the root is? Some of you were told that, that, you, saw, that you saw your parents fighting. You wanted, you wanted something that was going to look like love. And so you looked on these sites and these other places. You wanted a woman that would look like this. And you wanted a man that would look like this. See, that's the root. The fruit is pornography. But we got to deal with the root. We got to deal with what's the real issue. Some of you said you weren't, they told you you weren't going to be good enough. And so you've been dealing with that rejection your whole life. So you've been looking for someone and that's how you get in a relationship and it doesn't last because you've never dealt with the roots. So pornography is the fruit, not the root. And as we start this series, I want you to know that God wants to bring you complete and total healing. Complete and total healing in this area because he wants you to live free. He wants your relationship, your marriage to be whole. It's not whole right now. Some of you are not whole right now. And God is telling me right now, he wants to bring you freedom, but we have to deal with the roots. Don't get mad at the fruit. Here it is. Some of you, you're getting mad at the person. Why, why are you always angry? That's just the fruit. Why are they angry? Where does the anger come from? And if you never deal with the root, you're always going to be getting mad at the fruit. It's too late. But it's never too late for God. It's never too late for God. Well, God can't hear me. Yes, he can. There's nothing impossible for my God. Nothing impossible for my God. Come on, stand to your feet today.